All right, the first big story from TimCast.com. Brian Stelter to leave CNN. Reliable sources canceled. The media analysis show has been on the air since 1993. I didn't realize that. Yeah. They they put Brian Stelter on that show? No, he has a predecessor. Um, So his predecessor is a man named Howard Kurtz. And he eventually left CNN. He left uh, Reliable Sources to go on to be with Fox, who he's still with today. But so, So Brian Stelter is given this show. And mm-hmm. then burns it to the ground and yeah. destroys the legacy of a 30-year-old show. And I think this whole, uh, this story for me is interesting because it's a web. You can see where everyone comes from. Brian Seltzer, he came from the New York Times. And yeah. then they moved to, to Fox Media. Like, everyone is so interconnected in this world that, like... Incestuous. Yes, yes. that's a great word yes. for Media it. Media incest. Yeah, and so, to a certain extent, I know there's been some speculation about where he'll go next. Uh, and that's why I think companies like ours and platforms like YouTube are so interesting because they disrupt this... Uh, member sharing that. So you're saying my, we should we should hire Brian Stelter? Yes. <laughs> Only if I re- retain my rank as senior reporter and he has to start as a junior staff. I didn't say yes. as a reporter. We got some, we, we got some garbage. He wants to hang out with the chickens. We got yeah, chickens. Yeah, yeah, he can we, yeah. Kim can train him. I love yeah. it. I think it's great. Look, he's you know, I I'm uh, reluctant often to be so crass in reference to people. But this guy is is seriously one of the worst in media. No matter what happens, he's he always finds a way into weaseling some kind of shill defense for the establishment, no matter what they do. Even going as far as to tell people not to watch other propaganda networks, only watch us. Mm-hmm. I get it. If you know if you're dependent on ratings, you want to convince everybody, just keep watching us, keep watching us. But if you want to be honest about the idea of spreading truth and doing journalism, then what we say here is, oh, you should watch other shows. You should watch the left. You should watch the right. You should watch CNN, Fox News. Determine for yourself who you think is telling the truth and who you can trust. Yeah, I think uh, a sign of greatness and confidence is when you you encourage other people to go experience other things other than you. And then because they do and they trust you and they find out that their life is better as a result, then they come back and they want to hear more from what what else should I do? Because you're giving them honest, like, you know, objective advice. Yeah, I, li- I like the idea that his new boss came out and and said, hey, we're going to get back to telling news stories. And and how can you argue or debate with that? You know, he said, hey, we're a little bit too political. We want to get back to our origin story, which is telling news, which is the right thing. That's what you do. You know, CNN really was the, the top player for news for a long time. Mm-hmm. And when a story broke, you turned CNN on. And they destroyed that mm-hmm. with Chris Cuomo, with Don Lemon, mm-hmm. and to a lesser extent with Brian Stelter. They... You know, Chris Cuomo faking being in COVID quarantine is one of the biggest media scandals of, of, of our generations, of, of our generation. And it's it's even the, even uh, Ben Smith, the New York Times called him out like this was not something they could have just pretended didn't happen. Everybody was bringing up the fact that Chris Cuomo pretended to be in quarantine. And so Jeff Zucker came in and he turned CNN into reality TV. He had a personal vendetta against Donald Trump. He hated the man. And so he nuked an entire legacy. How amazing is that? Trump really, I don't know if he broke the minds of these people or if he, like some kind of wizard, pulled it to the front and center for us to see. But these people's brains shattered when when Donald Trump became president. Yeah, it was the news that I leaned on when I was going through special operations training, special forces training, uh, when the global war on terror was initiating with the invasion of Iraq and we were already in Afghanistan, CNN is the coverage I depended and leaned on for accurate information, which is crazy because, you know, fighting the war and then being away from home and not paying attention to news to come home to that. I think in 2016, when I started paying attention again to the news, it's like, what what's going on here? It's a completely different world. Well, I, I used to talk about uh, a couple of years ago, the CNN challenge. The CNN challenge was to turn on CNN and then uh, it was to, it was to be watching Fox News and then turn on CNN and the challenge was can you find a time when they're not talking about Trump mm. good luck mm-hmm. and so uh, it used to be that I would I would when I'm doing work I have CNN on while I'm working and it's for if like breaking news happens they'll have it very quickly mm-hmm. and then eventually uh, something happened with uh, it was Iran it was protests or something like that and they were talking about Trump. And then I was like, I'm seeing on Twitter, something's going on. And so I switched to Fox and there it is. Front and center on Fox News, protests erupting in Iran. And I was like, oh, wow. Switch back to CNN. And then I was like, what are they doing? There's like major international crisis happening and they're talking about Trump. Trump's, Trump's not even relevant to the news right now. 
Like he didn't do anything. They were just talking about him for the sake of talking about him. And so then something else happened later where there was like a major flood. I can't remember exactly where. And by this, at this point, I'm only watching, you know, America's newsroom on Fox because they actually were covering news. And then I thought to myself, I bet if I turn on CNN, it's Trump. Click, boom, there it is. So I filmed it. And I was like, here's the challenge, guys. Like not a literal challenge, but I was like, yeah. watch. Mm -hmm. That's all it was. They, they, they destroyed what legacy they had. And re reliable sources. To hear that it's been on the air for nearly 30 years and then Brian Seltzer burnt it to the Crazy. ground. To the ground. And they're suffering. I mean, one of the reasons that I think you pronounced his name Litched, like Chris Litch, who's who's licked. Take, licked? I can't say it. Oh. I did pop culture this week and learned I cannot read anyone's name. That's <laughs> that's that's all I learned. Chris L. Uh, anyways, he has taken over and part of it is to get control of their massive loss of their bleeding viewership and their bleeding profits. So it's, it's there's no way. There's no way for it to start. I mean, one of the things that I found interesting when I was researching for the article was that he has been monitoring who became more partisan under during the years that Donald Trump was in office. And he is, it looks like the reports are that he is wanting to cut as many people who are basically too far gone. There is no way to recover the reputation of their show. Uh, because he thinks that it's more important to bring them back to a moderate platform and on our news. I think that CNN's reputation is so damaged yeah. with so many Americans, that's an almost impossible task. But, you know, he's been given this bleeding ship. I mean, he's got to try and, you know, bail out, bail out. I'm mixing metaphors here. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Stop it from sinking somehow. <laughs> yeah. It's bandage the ship, whatever he needs to do. Not, yeah. there's, there's no way. No. There's no, no way. But what will they do? Sell the IP? Like sell the name to Disney or something? Or does Disney already they, own it? They've already CNN? sold it several times. Well, it's already under Warner Brothers, right? So like it's already a conglomerate of a conglomerate. You know, like it's already mixed in somewhere. I think eventually uh, someone else would maybe overtake them as like the prime uh, left-leaning news outlet, which is weird to even have to say that. Like we should just have news, but of course we can't. Uh, what One of the things I found interesting about Seltzer is he wrote this book about how Fox News is awful and Trump and whatever else. And then he updated it after January 6th to be like, see, I told you guys even worse than ever. And now he is the first one to go. I mean, he has really positioned himself as the anti-Trump fact checking media analyst and uh, his bias is too obvious. Just, what's he going to do? What's, what's he going to go now? Is he gonna... Well, I heard he's going to come work here with the chickens. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you Still, know, I, that's, I, I don't trust him with my chickens. He's got to start a show, like his own show where with he who? just uploads videos, interviews YouTube? Tim. I don't know. He Dude. becomes a YouTube <laughs> star. Yeah. He copies Tim's format. Like, I don't, I well, love to call them podcasts because that's like an Apple thing. Apple iPod is where the podcast word comes from. And mm -hmm. I'm tired of it. I don't trust, I don't like Apple as a, as a company. Vodcast. Vodcast. Stealth should start his own vodcast. Video and then on people demand. are saying he's going to start his own podcast. He's going to start uploading, cli uploading clips to YouTube. And then his audience, because it's independent media, is going to be very anti-establishment. And he's going to drift further to the right and then eventually have some flipping moment where he's like, I need to blow the whistle on CNN. Jet fuel I feel like he had, doesn't melt steel. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like he'd have to do the rounds. Like, you know how we have, uh, you know, conservatives who may fall out, fall out of like the establishment. They do some rounds on CNN. They take positions there and they're sort of like a punching bag for a while. I feel like he'd have to do the opposite. He'd have to like get some... I don't think any establishing conservative uh, media would take him, but he would need to sort of do the rounds and be like, well, this is what I meant, and then have this whole redemption arc. I mean, I think it would take a lot longer than people think because he is so publicly associated with being anti-MAGA. Well, Cuomo, he he founded the CCP. Did you guys know that? Yeah, he did. The Chris Cuomo yeah, Project. Correct, yeah. <laughs> he literally calls Dirty. it the, yeah. the Chris Cuomo, Cuomo Project. And no one was like, mm, no, think it's about a bad this idea, dude. You <laughs> should think, not do that. I think Tucker Carlson is an example that you can redeem yourself as like because he was kind of like a partisan hack in 2004 or 5 he struck me as when he wore a bow tie talked about how great the war was i mean at least i that's what i remember him being kind of like a a war hawk and then all of a sudden i know it was john stewart somebody shocked him awake and he realized yo what the hell is this world well he talked he, he, he talks about it on his show where he's like i used to think this you know until i had a conversation with this person and then realized how wrong that was and and he like took that. years for him to get back in people's good graces but with honesty and integrity and consistency you do i i'd be willing to bet that if brian stelter came out in like a month and said, I want to blow the whistle on everything CNN was doing, <laughs> the right would accept him in two seconds and mm -hmm. say, yes, yes, by all means, spill all the beans, publish everything, and, and we'll hear you out. I just wonder if he will, though. Obviously, I don't know him personally, but like, I think it will be very hard for him to to flip like that. I think he really sees himself as this like doer of right things, progressive cause, champion of you know correct journalism. I think 
it's going to take longer. I mean, I think he's going to have to hurt financially before he's willing to give in. It's it's what's weird to see him do is think on his own for in, in depth because <laughs> yeah. he looks like a t- it's like a talking head right mm-hmm. so he's reading the teleprompter he probably wrote it deliberately and he had this deliberate approach to everything but to actually see him free think through problems and through challenges and politics that would actually be entertaining to just listen to see if he ends up like a Tucker Carlson who I think is on the right side of what we're talking about. That's the thing about Stelter. He does listen. I, I see him in yeah. clips and times. Sometimes yeah. like he's being humbled where he's like, oh, what mm. have I done? Oh, God. Like there's this Ted Koppel video I reposted. Jen Perlman tweeted it out, so I retweeted it. And Ted Koppel's like, I mean, this is the reason why. I, I don't remember exactly what talking about. Why CNN is failing. Why why people don't believe you. You talk about Trump every day. If there's 10,000 deaths in Malaysia, maybe it'll get a mention, but then it's just yep. back to Trump, Trump, Trump. And Stelter's like, saying, just taking it, you know? I mean, what, he's not really trying. it's true. Really, yeah. What was he gonna say? Be like, well, we're, hmm. womp. Yeah. I looked up CNN, what it stands for. Cable News Network. Well, as we all know, cable is done. Mm-hmm. So Bye. as is the C so in CNN, yep. what's the new? <laughs> I mean, get rid of the name. It doesn't make sense anymore. Well, I, you know, look, with uh, Liz Cheney on Tuesday being, uh, uh, what's, the, what's the right word? I'm trying to be polite here. Excised. Yes. I'll say that. Yes. Excised yes. from uh, the GOP. That's a, it's a good day. And then today when uh, I got a message uh, right before this happened, right before it was announced, that someone who has got sources hit me up and said, Stelter's out. Here it comes. And then I was like, it's like I need more than this. You can't just like DM me. And then I saw like a few minutes later the breaking reports, and I'm like, oh man. And then I got, I got uh, uh, word Jim Acosta is going to be next. So you know, I look forward to it. Um, there, there's some there's some positive here. Thanks for checking out this segment from the Timcast IRL podcast. But if you want to check out the full show live, tune in Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And if you want more special access content, head over to TimCast.com and become a member. Your membership helps sustain this company, keep our journalists employed, makes this show happen, and you will get access to exclusive members-only segments of the TimCast IRL podcast. And there's a massive library to check out. So again, go to TimCast.com or tune in Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And we'll see you all there.